15 and a half, the front and the back, and the sides 21 because we're using through dovetails. Here's a sample of a through dovetail. This is one of the sides here and it goes all the way through to the front and the front goes all the way through to the side. So it's very easy to arrive at the dimensions of your drawer. Okay, now next thing we have to do is establish the inside of the drawer and you can see we've done that simply by cutting the dado for the floor ahead of time. And when you cut that dado, always cut it about a quarter of an inch deep or halfway through the thickness of the stock. From the bottom of the floor to the top of the dado, we want about a half inch. We want a half inch right there. All right, so we're going to set these together. And now, next what we're going to do is number the corners. And number them one, one, each corner with numbers. Two and two go together. Three and three and four and four. And when you number these, uh, don't number real close to the edge because you might cut that out. When you cut it out, you'll, you'll lose the number. So let's keep the number back a little bit. Okay, the first thing we're going to do now, when we cut a dovetail here, we're going to cut the dovetail, use a dovetail bit here, use a pattern bit here. And those two joints have to go together. It's not going to work where number one and number three fit together. The numbers have to align up together, and you'll see why later. All right, we're going to use the sides first. We're going to cut the sides. We're going to cut the dovetails into the sides first. Okay, in cutting those dovetails, <coughs> we're going to use the Katie jig right here. And we're going to cut the dovetails on this side with the dovetail bit, and we're going to cut the pattern bit, use the pattern bit on this side. And you can see how we got the, the odds and the evens up here. Remember what I said? We always put the groove to the inside, okay? We're going to do the number one side first, so we're going to put the groove to the inside. Well, the number one side has to go against the one side right here. So we stick this in our jig, slide it over till we're stopped. Make sure you're flush on the bottom right there and you're against the stop right there. Then all you do is take these toaster bar handles, snug it up. This jig comes with a really good instruction manual, so you can read the, read the manual before you start cutting. All right, we've got our lock secured. Now, what we're going to do next is stick the dovetail bit into our router. Okay, we'll snug it up. Put our insert ring into here. Right there. Now, how high do we set that dovetail bit? Well, what we need to do is find a piece of stock. This is the thickness of this stock right here. We're going to lay this right onto here, and I'm going to line it up to here. I want that bit to be just a little bit proud of this stock. So you can see i got to lower it just down just a little bit. Right there. However far that bit is going through the stock, that's how far your dovetails are going to go through each other. Okay, we've got the bit set to the right height. Now we're ready to come into here, and the bearing is going to be our guide. We're going to cut those three dovetails, right, like this. Okay. Cutting dovetails with this jig, uh, it just can't be any easier. All you do is unloosen this now, flip it over, we're keeping the inside to the inside. Now we got number two, we know it has to go against number two over here. And we do the same thing. Make sure we're lined up against the stop, we're square, and we'll start cutting dovetails there. Okay, we've got all the dovetails cut on both sides. Now, we're ready to turn the jig around, use the other side, and we're going to cut with the pattern bit. And again, we put the inside of the drawer to the inside. Uh, this number one is against our number one, right like this. Okay, we set her on, make sure she's flush on the top, and pushed against the number one, this stop. Now, this stop really, technically, it could even be way over here. I don't care. 
you know, just so that they're square on both sides. But we're lined up here, snugged up, and we're ready to go. Now, what we need to do is change bits. Now, the nice thing about this set of bits, this dovetail bit and this pattern bit, we also, just like our other sets, made them the same height. So all we have to do with this pattern bit is drop it down onto our rubber grommet and we're good to go. Snug it up, put our insert ring in again, and we should be ready to go. Now if you want to, for, for safety, just check it to make sure this is the right height. We're just a little bit proud, just where we're supposed to be, right there. Now we'll start cutting with the pattern bit. Doing this is just not in and out, you're taking a, a bigger width. Now on an area like this now, what I like to do, I don't like to come in here and cut right here. I'll cut out here first, clean it up, and then make my last cut in here. Same thing over here. Cut out here first, make your last cut in here. You'll see right now. <laughs> Okay, now we'll show you how this fits together. Here's the sides of our drawers. Here's number two, and here's number two. And the grooves have to go together, of course. And we're gonna set it right like this. Now I'm just gonna show you the, the snugness of the joint. I like my dovetail, you know, to be fairly tight and fairly snug. Now, you can make this joint looser if you want, simply by taking this backer board right here. See, and you can see I shimmed a little bit. I put a little piece of cardboard in here. Unloosen the two set screws here. If you want a looser joint, just shim this and bring that backer board out a little bit, and you'll get a little bit looser joint. But I like mine fairly snug. Okay, next thing we're going to do is take these four pieces over to our bench, and we'll show you how we glue them up. Okay, we're ready to glue up our drawer, but we have to cut the floor first. Now, let me show you how we arrive at the dimensions for the floor. It's very easy. We cut the grooves in here a little bit deeper than a quarter of an inch. So let's, let's say a quarter of an inch. Well, you know the floor has to be the same length as this plus a quarter and a quarter. So all you have to do is measure from right here to right here, 14 and a quarter, and add a quarter and a quarter. So 14 3 fourths is the width of our floor. The length of our floor, all we do, is measure from the inside of this to the inside of one of these. 19 inches, 19 and a half inches. So from here to here, add a quarter and a quarter, 19 and a half. So we've cut our floor out right here to that size. We're ready to start gluing this up. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna start with one and one, let's say. You can start with either one. What I do is I'll start gluing here. What this I used to get the old glue bottle and shake it, but this glue bottle makes it very easy to glue up dovetails. You can have, the, you can have your glue sitting upright, put a little bit of glue, and I always hit the tops of all these joints right here too, right like that. Okay, that one's done. Now, getting inside of here, I'll come inside of here on all of these too, right like that. Flip it over. You're ready to glue it together, okay? So we'll take the two pieces, lay them on top right like that, and I just nudge them in with a hammer. And I always like a lot of glue in there. I'll just take that glue off like that, and we'll sand it later. All right, so we'll continue doing that with the other side right here now.
Okay, there's our other side. Now, all we do is take our floor, lay it in there next. Right there. Now we do the same thing. We glue these, glue these joints, glue these joints, and we'll come down here and kneel that on. So we'll continue to do that. drawers put together here now uh, all sides lining up nice and square now the last next thing I like to do is I like to take the top edges of my drawers and put a little radius on that so let's go over to our router table and I'll show you how we do that okay you can see uh, on my drawers here in my router table cabinet how I, how I radius that top edge I don't like to leave it square so uh, we'll show you how we do that in our router table here we've got the round over bit a little round over bit in our router and all we're going to do is stick it upside down and radius all the inside and then the three sides on the outside. We don't want to radius this front outside edge because that's where our drawer front goes and then we'd get dust going down in there. So all four edges on the inside and three edges on the outside. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you might require a little sanding in the corners there a little bit, but it, it really finishes off the drawer nice. All right, next thing we want to do now is attach our drawer slides to the side. And if the drawer slides have a left and right side, and when I insert them on, they sit right there like that. There's screws on the bottom, screws on the sides. I always use the screws on the sides, put one here and one here. So we're going to line that up with the front. You can bring it back just a hair if you want, and we'll start screwing the drawer slides to the side of the drawer. Okay, we got our slides attached. Now let's take this over to our uh, <coughs> cabinet and see how it fits. Okay, here's our drawer. We tilt it down like this, bring it up. And she fits nice. Now, we're going to show you how we're going to take and mount these slides, these blue motion slides, to our other drawer. Okay, we're ready to uh, attach this to our slides. Now, before we do that, I'm going to show you how <coughs> we have to prepare this drawer. You can see the slide now is going to fit how it's clamped on the inside of the drawer here like this. Well, you can see that my drawer has to be notched out here for, in order for this slide to fit. You can do that a bunch of different ways. One way is this drawer here, you can see, we just left the back of that drawer out. That's one way of doing it. The other way is, is like this. What I did, I just took this over to the table saw and just made a series of cuts and notched and relieved it there. You could take a flush trim bit and, and flush trim it too, either way. All right. Once you have that relieved, now you can see where my drawer slide is going to fit in there, right like that. Okay, these drawer slides have a little tip on them, right there, that little tip. What we have to do is, and, and, is mark that where that's going to go. And what I do is I set my slide onto here, and I'll just come into here and, and hit it. And you can see the little indentation it makes right there. Okay, so all we have to do is drill a quarter inch hole about halfway through that back. They make a little jig uh, to do this with, but uh, I, for, the, for the price of it, I don't think it's necessary to own it. I just mark them like that and drill them freehand. I've never had a problem right like that. Okay, now our slides, that's how they lock into the back. They'll 
lock into that, that pin right there like that. Now, what we have to do to the front now on the inside, in order for these slides to lock on the front, is these little clips come with the slides. Okay? And again, they, there's a little jig that you can take and drill the holes. I just take and push these in here and, and just freehand them right in here like this too, at a little bit of an angle. We'll screw those in. Drill going forward here. Okay, our drawer is all set now. The slides are already attached in the cabinet, remember. This drawer, we'll take it over to the cabinet and see how it works. Okay, in mounting our drawer slides, uh, the Blue Motion slides, we have our clips on here. Our, in the back, we have our slots drilled for the slides. We have our holes. These holes are going to line up with these here. All you do is simply just set the drawer on top of the slides. Push the drawer all the way in till the clips lock in the front, and you got they're locked in. Full extension and beautiful closing of that drawer. Just boom, just like that. All right, next thing we're going to do is put the other drawer back in and I'll show you how we attach our drawer fronts next. Okay, we're ready to install uh, the drawer front on the front of our drawer right there. And our openings here is 5 by 16, so we're going to go a half inch overlay on all sides. So we're going to make this 6 by 17. And the way I used to do this is I would, I would put a stop underneath here, set it on here and a stop here, hold these two, pu put pressure on both pieces, come out, clamp this and screw it. And once in a while this invariably would slide and slip. Well, we found a better way of doing this. We got a little jig made out of plywood first of all. All we're going to do is just take and clamp this on so we're square on both sides right there. Okay, now when we put our drawer front on there, <clears throat> first thing we have to do is we have to drill the holes for our hardware anyway, so let's do that ahead of time. Let's do that ahead of time. We've got a, our little easy mark here, and it's got a stop in the back right here, see? Okay, and our drawer is 17 inches, so all we have to do is line up with 17 on each side. We're lined up with 17 on each side. I'm going to slide this stop over here, and that's my alignment for all my drawers are all the same. The drawer this way is six inches, so we got a half scale going this way. All I have to do is line this up to the six inch mark right there, and let's gauge it right there, perfect. Snug that down. Now we have some bushings we're gonna drill through. If you got one knob, you drill this one. Here, for handles, you go here, and then you can adjust these to whatever width handles you want. Most of yours are right inside here like this. So once you got that locked into position, you're ready to drill the holes for your hardware and they're drilled very accurately with this jig. It comes with a six inch aircraft drill. We're going to come into here. Drill that hole. Okay, we've got the holes drilled. They're perfectly placed now. We're ready to install that. All we do is set it on our jig. And with those two holes now, what I'm going to do is use those two holes and, and screw it right to the, my drawer. Okay? To do that, we're going to put our driver in, our square driver in. And all we have to do is set this up to here where we want it. And we know it's going to be perfectly placed. We're not pulling the drawer out or anything. Screw it right to our drawer. And you can do this with all four of your drawers. Now, once it's set, you know it's set perfect. Now, we'll pull it out. We're going to take two screws from the inside now. One behind here and one behind here. And screw that drawer. Right there. And right here. There. Now we can come into here and lose these two screws now. Those are temporarily, but they, they did the alignment for us. Now we come back in here with our big drill bit, drill all the way through both, attach your hardware, and that's an easy way of aligning your drawers. 
Okay. Now I'm going to show you an easy way of attaching the doors to your cabinet next. Okay, we'll show you how we're going to mount the hinges to our doors here now. And the hinges we use are uh, the European type hinges. Uh, they're, they're made for a face frame joint like we're doing. And first thing we have to do is drill the ho three holes. And you can see there's a big 35 millimeter hole we need and two 8 millimeter holes because we use the hinges that have the little dowels on them. They really work great and I'll show you. We have a jig right here that's going to drill those three holes. You can see the three, three bits on the bottom. All you do is set this jig on your door and I always line it up with one edge right here on the top. I have two cam clamps that come down and clamp that tight. Okay, set it down and we're going to drill the holes just like this. The two eight millimeter holes first and then the 35 millimeter. Okay, that quickly you can drill the three holes and they're lined up just perfectly placed for you. Now what's nice about these dialed hinges, all you have to do is take that hinge and center it right there and two wax. Your hinge is installed that quick and easy, right like that, okay? And those dials will never come out. Now, what we're doing, remember, just like our doors, I'm taking this door and I'm overlaying it a half inch. These hinges are made for a half inch overlay. We also have other hinges for a three eighths inch overlay and so forth. When I set this jig onto my door right here, you can see where these two stops stop it. Well, you can adjust those stops simply by turning the screw and turning your stop here. Number three setting is three eighths of an inch. Number two setting is half inch. That's what I basically I use. But right there is how we set it and stop it. So we'll set it on those two stops, slide it down, line it up, and very easy to dr accurately drill your holes. Jig comes off, screws get mounted that quick and easy. Now you can take these, unscrew those, those, those plastic dials will stay embedded in there, stain and spray your door, put your screws back in as many times as you want and you're ready to go. Okay, next I'm going to show you how we're going to install this door. Okay, we're going to mount that door and we're going to have a half inch overlay right here. You can see we put this inch and a half strip, we got it clamped onto there. Uh, automatically the hinge is going to overlay me a half inch on my face frame up here. So, you can see our hinges here. They have a little point here and two little points on the center. That's where you're going to center it on the face frame. So all we do is open it up, bring it up here, set it on our little stop, and pop it right there and it's going to kind of halfway stick for you. And all we do is take one screw, comes with it, just put it right in the center. Right there. Okay, we've got our door attached there. Now, when you slam the door, now, remember here that door slamming? Well, remember we used to put those little felt bumpers here? Next, I'm going to show you a different way of silencing that door. Okay, we got a little uh, blue motion closer here. And what we're going to do is mount this closer. You can see there's a little uh, screwing mechanism right here. And when you unscrew that screw in or out, that makes the door close faster or slower. So make sure when you mount this up that that screw is available right here. And we usually mount these to the inside of the door. The farther you get this out here, the slower the door is going to close. So we get them about an inch and a half, between one and two inches away from the end. All right. So all you do is line this up approximately right there. There's a little stop on the front right there. Come underneath and screw it into the top of your face frame. Make sure we're lined up. Right there. And that's your closer. Now when I slam that door, see I got a nice soft close. Takes a while to close. And you can make that close faster or slower 
simply by coming in here and adjusting that the pressure on that screw. We'll back it off, and you can see it's going to close slower yet. It takes longer yet. So, but it's nice for uh, all doors, so they close nice and soft. Okay, we're pretty much done with our cabinet here. Let me uh, uh, show you a little review on our base cabinet next. Okay, you can see we pretty well got our base cabinet built showing you how to use that tongue and groove method. Now, we're going to incorporate that same tongue and groove method and I'll show you how we're going to build our uppers. Our uppers are pretty much the same as our bases, so we're going to go pretty fast showing you how we do our upper cabinet next. Okay, here's the upper cabinets we're going to build. Uh, the same length as our base cabinets are going to fit above them. Uh, we got two doors here, two here, and two here that are up and, and you can have a microwave or whatever you want to have here. We're, just, we're showing a, a different aspect of uppers. Now, we're going to build the face frame the same way. We drill the pocket holes, we cut the grooves, the grooves are cut behind here because we're flush here. The grooves are also cut on the outside because we're flush on the two outsides. We also cut grooves down on the top of this bottom, on the top of this bottom, and on the top of this bottom piece. And you can see we're not going to cut any grooves though on the top here, okay, because uh, our top is not going to fit into a groove. We don't have no corner box. Our top is just going to come a quarter inch plywood right down on top of here. All right. And also you can see we make this rail four inches wide instead of two inches. The reason I do that is because I have a lot of room for my crown, come down and attach my crown molding and I can have the same reveal here as I do in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to turn this cabinet around so you can see what I'm talking about with the grooves. Okay. You can see we have the groove on the outside. This groove is right here on the inside, like so we're flush. Grooves at the top, none at the, none at the very top though. Okay, I'm going to show you now, again, remember, when we put our, our tongues in here, we've got our tongues and grooves, flush trim this off so we bypass this. And what we did here, we cut a groove all the way down the back for our back here. Same thing over here. We got a groove all the way down each side. Now. On the middle section, we just cut the grooves partial because down here, this is going to be open. All right, so what I'll, I'll show you how we're going to do this. We're going to, what I'll do is I'll take and glue this up and I'll clamp that.